Got doggone royalty in the building, man. I'm talking about when I say uh, lyrical assassin, you repeat after me, bun to the motherfucking B. Hey, hey, what's going down? It's happening, fam. Long it's, time, man. It's good talking to you. You know, it's crazy that we're doing this today because okay. today is December 4th. It's Pat's birthday. Yes. It's Jay Z's birthday. Yes. But it's also the day Pimp Pass. Yes, it's a triple. You know what I'm saying? So we, we hitting them with a triple today. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it's a blessed day to be able to do to do this on this day. I, I, you know, we supposed to do this earlier a couple times. Uh, we're back and forth about figuring it out. This the day that, that worked this, out. This the day that worked out. I don't Man. believe that's a coincidence at all. Oh, no. And you're sitting here looking at Pat on the wall, <laughs> December 4th, on the wall. You know what I'm Ain't saying? Ain't that something? Man, this is too real, man. It's too trill. Yeah, That's man. what it is. Ain't, it's ain't too no trill. Nah, ain't it's no this. coincidence, man. It's all about God's will, man. And like you say, man, rest in peace, pimp. We love you, brother. Rest in peace, Pat. Shout out to Big Jig. You know what I'm saying? He done done a lot for Houston culture, your, your career, pimp career. Nah, shit, man. He married to... Married to Houston coach. Rorty. Yes, big <laughs> you can't, yeah, because I ain't going to lie, that day, that last one where we was at the uh, Toyota, not the last one that just happened. Yeah, yeah. Many moons ago when we got the Cartier lighters and all that good shit, we were sitting there talking, right? And, uh, you know, everybody mainly. And Jig, he, uh, you know, he tripping on the shirt. So he like, man, tell me something about Fat Pat. He said, man, I always hear Fat Pat. Right. Fat Pat. I say, well, when you tell me about Biggie, I tell you about Pat, and we could do that all day because you there got, it is. you know what I'm saying? We got that in common. And it's like I hit him with, you know, hey, man, you one of my favorite, you know, rappers. I just got to tell you that. He say, well, that's funny because she and my favorite rappers in here. And he pointed at you and Scarface. I thought that was crazy. dope. I say, that's crazy, he's man. He's a solid nigga, man. He's he, he a solid nigga. Always been solid with me. I can't speak for nobody else, but always been solid with me. Man, how the hell did that happen when y'all big pimping? You set that up or did? No, nah, no. Nah. So here's the crazy thing, Mike. We was a we had got the first call was um Jay Z had did the song with Two Short called just a week ago. I remember. Pimp I was remember. supposed to be on that record. Okay. But they wanted, without you. Yeah, yeah. That was a separate call. They wanted Pimp on the record because it was more player themed, right? Okay. Um, uh, but they wanted so Pimp was like <clears throat> well, Pimp had just moved into this new house in Atlanta, in Mableton. <laughs> had a whole full studio set up in the house. Right. So they told Ho, perfect, come on to the, you know, come on down to the house. Let's we can it. knock it out. And Ho was like, well, we're not traveling right now. I'm not leaving New York. Because this was literally in the middle of the East Coast, West Coast beat. Mm. So he was like, shit, I ain't, I ain't leaving New York right now. So Pimp was like, shit, I ain't, I ain't leaving the South. I ain't leaving the South. So <laughs> I guess know. it ain't going to happen. And, and it didn't happen. But it came back around. Um... You know, shout out to uh, DJ Clark Kent. That's who okay. turned. Yeah, uh, you see, know, I always thought Premier had like you know. Nah, shout out Premier. Shout yeah. out Premier for sure. Yeah. No, nah, it was it was Clark Kent that turned Hove on to, to UGK, the situation. Yeah, and then when Hove wanted to double back for the reaching out to Pimp, um, that came through Chaka Zulu. Wow, shout you know out, shout out. Shout shout out to, so we've been knowing Chaka Zulu since about probably 93, 94. Chaka was one of the reps for. BMI, the publishing company we were signed to right, at the time, the distributors, right. you know what I'm saying? He was one of the reps for that. He introduced us to Chris. That's when Chris was, Ludacris was Chris Lover Lover working at the radio station. At the station. radio station, so, yeah. You know, got to watch both of them come up you know, like they come did. up as a team, Ooh. as a unit, you know what I'm saying? Separately and collectively. So And nothing happens by chance. No, no, no. You know what I'm saying? Either. I got to tell people all the time, it's not what you know, it's who you know. So you know all, these, all these stories interconnect. All these different That's crazy. connections and all these, you know, meeting people, building relationships with Chaka Zulu is how that that got back even to ca us. So, even came to fruition, yeah, right? Yeah, because when Hope called me, Hope called me on my phone, and I thought it was somebody playing on my phone. You know what I'm saying? Whoa! So I hung up because the number was blocked. This was like the first time when when phone numbers could come be up like un uh, right. well unavailable and shit like that. So I didn't know who it was. He was like this Jay Z. And I'm like, man, quit playing on my phone. I hung up. And he called right back, and when he called back, he talked in that Jay Z like I could clearly hear. Here, yeah, he got a, Jay Z got a very very distinct, distinct voice. talking voice. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And I'm it's like, just like that too, for yeah. real. Yeah, I met him twice. You're right. You're and right. so I was like, hey, this nigga Jay Z on the phone. The chat was like, well, what do you want? <laughs> I don't want to get all into that though. But we ended up no, doing, we know the but character. It, but, but, it, it, but yeah, it, it, so it was about you got the, the inside life. Yeah, yeah. But it, it was about the song and. He didn't really want to do the song initially because it was so different 
from which anything I we had done. And, yeah. you know, Jay-Z's audience is not our audience. So it was going to be a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, now, you know, it there's is. a lot of yeah. overlap. But back then, it wasn't um, the same. We didn't share necessarily the same fan base. So he was concerned that people who would hear Big Pimpin' would get would, it wrong. Yeah, because they'd be hearing us for the first time and think that's the kind of shit we make. On the national stage. So that's like why that, he, yeah. so that's why the verse he did is so Texas, it's so Houston. You know what I'm saying? Keep it in up in my It was so Houston. He didn't yeah. want he didn't want no part of his participation on the record to be misrepresented. You mm. wouldn't know automatically where this person is from and what they represent. I'm talking about as soon as he come on, you know what it is. And then the story about this this mink coat and, yes. and Gloria is just amazing, man. Him and his coat in five hundred degrees weather. What, what, what was this famous line? Okay, man, TV ain't got no temperature. <laughs> he didn't got no temperature. It's too dope, man. And, and you know, I look back at that day, man. Like it was hot as hell. Yes, we was drinking. Like if you notice, he had the Hennessy bottle. What are we drinking? Hennessy on the beach. It's like eighty something degrees. Like we out there fucked up for real. So when you see Dame Dash falling in the water with the bra, this is real. He's actually yeah. fucked up. Yeah. At the end of the video, if you look at the end of the video, it's like the master shot where everybody looking cool and uh -huh. shit. Yeah. And Dame Dash is knocked out on the sofa. He done passed out. He been drinking all, <laughs> all day. day. Like wasted, man. Wasted. It's crazy because I thought it was Cap. You know what I mean? When he told me, like, you know. Scarface, one of my favorite artists, and this is my favorite group of all time, Bun B and UGK. But then as years pass, and you keep hearing the same thing over and over, you know, oh nah, he wasn't playing, it was serious. No, nah, he was he he was uh, yeah. you know, not just a a, a a mutual a person we had mutual respect for. Okay. Um, but he really could see like where we were going. He could see the impact that UGK was really having in the game. Um, and we still talk about it to this day. You know, oh, what kill we, me? We still talk about how, you know, his favorite thing is, <coughs> you know, whenever we talk about Chad, he's always talk about, man, how Chad was a star. Like, whenever we would be around each other, he would watch Chad, like, you know. Every demeanor, the way he every act, move. His character, his personality, all of that, and just like the, the audacity that Chad had to believe he was as live as he was before. I've been knowing, I knew him for many years. It's and, in the and water. When I met him, he thought he was exactly as cool as he ended up becoming. And that's the crazy shit about, about this whole legacy is that I was saying that earlier today, I was like, you know, Chad is one of the people that actually lived this life the way he wanted to live this life and is going to be when remembered. Out. Exactly the How way he wanted. want to be remembered. You and know I'm, finna, I'm finna cross you up with this here. You know, me and you got a lot of history, we got a lot in common when it come to that because Pat was the same way. Absolutely. Fat Pat would literally see me in the kitchen doing what we was doing back then, right? Facts. I got 72 jars, three, four microwaves going. At that time, if you would've walked in there, I see you, boy. You on your shit, boy. I like, you know. But I'm mad. This why we can't. Right. I'm going to make you throw all this shit away. I'm mad. Like, fuck the goddamn props. This is why we not stars, because you more worried about this than you are worried about getting your ass to that studio. See, here's the thing. You have to understand that there's a difference between drug dealing and hustling. Mm -hmm. People that deal drugs make a conscious decision that that's what they're going to do. They're going to sell drugs. Right. A hustler that typically ends up selling drugs does so because that's the best hustle available to him. At that moment. At, at the time. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? So I believe what Pat was trying to tell you that you a hustler, nigga. Come hustle this music. Like you do that. Yes, yes. Come Put lock the in, energy in. Lock in on this. Instead of making that, instead of that locking in, right. come lock yeah. in on this. <laughs> Got you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's what, and you're right, because that's the same uh argument me and Ro have. You know, we fought out every 90 days. It's my brother. Like how you and Pimp. Yeah. That's why I say we got so much in common. It's crazy. Because at a time when you was like, uh, all right, it's fun. It's that. Pimp was like, no, nigga, we that. Mm -hmm. And it took you to, you know, unfortunately him to go to jail for you to just be like, you know what? It's going down. And so, that's when you turned up. Because I didn't have to really worry about all that shit. Pimp was right. always worried about that type of shit. So all you had to I, do was show up and rap. That's it. That's it. All I had to do. Pimp was producing. Pimp was mixing. Pimp was sequencing the album. I ain't really have to worry about none of that shit. I just show, that's why I was able to be as good of a rapper as I eventually became. I swear. Because that's all the nigga wanted me to do was just rap. Don't worry about none of this other shit. I'm handling all this other shit. That's, right. that's what I already do. I just need you 
to be the coldest nigga on the mic. And Show I, them because he knew. Do. Yeah. He always told me that. Like, but then the nigga kept giving me slow ass music. I said, my <laughs> nigga, I can't. I can't show people I can rap good to this slow ass shit. We I doing country rap tunes, you know what I'm we, but on. We these country rap tunes. But, but we got the murder. Yeah. Oh, that we, I, we got the murder eventually. It took bro, me a while, but we man. got the murder. That's the hardest verse, period. Man, I seen somebody uh who was that broke it down line by line. And I'm talking about, man, yeah, you the coldest in the South. I didn't see Tip, Tip, Tip broke it down. That's who it was. Bro. That's who it was. Tip. He's like, man, that shit is unfucking believable. And it only shocks me because, you know. I'm finna take you back. Infinity. Kim. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Her house. The Jaguar. Bam. The Jaguar the Jag. days. The Jag days. That's what I was gonna say. I say, I say the Mike gonna try to ask me or bring up where I know him from. Yeah. Uh, he, as, if I'm a, as if I'm gonna forget. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was the days. And we see, talking Kim, the beginning, y'all. Yeah, see, Infinity was a female rapper from Port Go ahead. My, 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 my OG. Give her respect. Because Kim, sure. was, Kim was rapping. Before we would. That's what I wanted to know. See, yeah. that, it's a lot of things we motherfuckers know. They don't yeah. know that. Yeah. Please give me the lay down on her, man. So, so Infinity was in that first stream of rappers from Port Arthur coming out of PA. Wow. Like Pimp was in that in that group. DMD was in that collective. Shout out DMD. Uh, shout out to Mr. Boomtown, the video director. I didn't know was, he was from Port he, Arthur. He, not only is he from Port Arthur, he is one of the first rappers. He was in the first rap group from Port Arthur. So Boomtown is my OG. That's like my rap OG. Like them, them the niggas that was doing it, the first niggas, and Chad. Chad was like the In that youngest. first wave. Yeah, yeah he Chad was the, was young the nigga youngest. With them. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I come oh, in on the second man. wave of niggas. Man, why, why I sound like you finna tell me that Steven Jackson did beats back then or some shit? Man, no, he too young. <laughs> like, man, you didn't just learn me something serious. There. That's crazy. Boomtown? Yeah, man. But that, Kim, that and I didn't know that about Kim either. You yeah, know, shout so, out to baby girl. You know what I mean? Like, that's and, my and, sis for and, real, and, for real. And that's why I used to be with Kim. Like, Kim had... Um, You're cramping my style. You know, Kim had a, 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 a lot of... Kim really believed in us. You know what I'm saying? She, she believed. Did. She believed in, in me particularly. We got to that. That's what I'm just gonna say. You. You know what I'm saying? We spent, she a, made we spent a lot of time, and she, you know, as a big, but from a big sister perspective, cutting for me, looking out for me, making sure I could move around, connecting me to the right people, like Bam. You know what I'm saying? Just knowing, hey, these type swear. of niggas. And you know, shout out to my partner, Player D, uh, they because they all lived in the townhomes and the condos over there off of 16 by, yeah, by that, NRG. But you know, I was in the y'all. She was in the green tops. So I was in the brown top. Yeah. That's why I would always come right there to you. You know what I'm saying? And this is a time when Pocket Full of Stones was the shit. But this we was the earliest days. Like we wasn't we wasn't the, the nowhere first near. Pocket Full of Stones, the one that just the hood loved to death. So, you know, it was popping, but it grew even heavier past that. So it's just an honor to be part of that. I can mention that people don't even know. Like no, that's no. real and that history. Was, again, that's really, and that wasn't a music relationship. At, you know what I'm saying? And no, that wasn't like no. a music relationship at all. That was just me in the city fucking with the, the homegirl that I knew from the city who let me come around, you know what I'm saying? Let me ride around in the Jag every day. What? Day, you oh, know you what come saying? on, man. She get loose, She used to let me flex, man. Yeah. Long, and she used to let me flex, man. Kim was a good person. Kim actually... Uh, we used to do my mama hair too. When she went back to put on, she used to do my mama hair. Because that's what I'm finna get to, because you know she was the motherfucker that did everybody's shit. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, come on, man. Oh, my God, bro. So, yeah, question, man, we go back, man. And, does, and, we, and we talk about 92. That's what I've just, just been so saying. Just so people know, the conversation we talk about, the year 1992. we talk, 1992. That's how far back we go. This is real shit, because we got closer before me and Pimp got closer. Me yeah. and you did. Now, and you wasn't even, I was, this is crazy. I was the baby. You wasn't even, he wasn't rapping or none, none of that, that shit. None. All street shit. Yeah, just none of that. Locked into the street. None of that, bro. I'm glad Big Boy brought you out. Man, I had, I had a relationship with Troy back then. Mm -hmm. And me and three two, so I was part of that early shortstop shit. Okay, but when I went to, we drove after Face left, and we drove to uh, Miami. Not Face, that was DJ Action. DJ Action at that time, you're right. So we went after Face left. He told all us to come. Of course, three went. Everybody went. It broke up shortstop. I stayed because Troy had the fucking hubbles. He, Do you see, know what I'm saying? See, see like, now, I, I didn't look at. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to Jay to rap because Face was like. Well, action at that time nah, was like, nah, nah. you got it, your voice, you this, you that, come on. It, like I said, let's, I go back to, let's go back to what I said yeah. earlier. At that time, rap was not as clear a path to getting paid as the streets would. Exactly. It's the early days of rap. <laughs> right now, so money. This is when Jay Prince getting them first millions. Exactly. Right? So only yeah. the Jay Prince's, the Russell Simmons, you know what I'm saying? Only the people that owned the record companies back then was making real was money. making real, real money. 
You know what I'm he had it to a science back then. Shout out to the OG for real. To where he would push up. He know you gonna press fifty thousand. He print up fifty thousand. Yeah. Ain't no need to do nothing else because I know this is what you finna do. So my question again back to that is, I always wondered, this was because you know three was always attached to my hip. Mm -hmm. Did you meet him then or did you meet him away from me? I met him away from you. I met three two through Big Mun. Okay. Big, Big Mun is from this clique called the Org. We used to be with Rick Royal and Royal Flush. Is that the Org Squad or no? Uh, no, 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 no. That's I'm a different sorry. squad. Yeah. So okay. he used to be with Royal Flush. Right, uh, right, one of the early rap groups For on sure. rap a lot. You know Dallas, what I'm saying? Shout yeah. out to Rick Raw, mm -hmm. one of the coldest niggas ever. Um, Legends. Yeah. So I met I met three two through um who brought who brought me to three two. Was they convicts at this time already? Yeah, they was the okay. convicts. They okay. was definitely the convicts. That's what I was wondering. Did you meet him when he was before he left Troy, or was he rap? No, he he was rap a lot when I met him. Okay, for so sure. yeah, I, yeah, and I yeah. I want to say. I might have met 3 2 through Lonnie Mac or somebody. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Because Lonnie Master. Mac, he rest was in the, peace. He was the bridge. Re he rest was, in peace yeah, to Lonnie yeah. Mac. Lonnie Mac. I, I'm the, I think I'm the 2023 Lonnie Mac. You know I was I mean? running with Lonnie Mac when I was 16 years old. I met yeah. Lonnie Mac out here in Houston on spring break because my brother them lived in Braids Court and he used to be. I mean, uh, all that. He used to be off Gessner with the Deaf Foe, with John B and them, I and, and, oh, and White Boy Wiz, the DJ. Yes. With the coldest DJs yes. ever oh, in Houston, man. DJ Wiz. DJ Wiz, man. And 3-2 yeah, you... brought me to Rick Royal and them, and that's when I really started wanting to be like a oh. lyricist. Okay. I was already rapping and into the street music and all of that type shit because that was but around me. Being a lyricist. But being around you... them niggas was teaching me that I could talk about this shit in a different way. And still be. No, I can still keep a hood or whatever, but mm -hmm. actually, they thing was, you got a talent to actually write rhymes better than you writing them. Right. You just right. gotta wanna write rhymes like that. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. My thing was, I didn't wanna compromise the content because yeah. the type of shit we was trying to bring attention to, we felt was vital. You know what I'm okay. saying? Because UGK, if you listen to the music, like people used to say, we glorify rap. If you listen to Pocket Full of Stones, this is about niggas that sell dope, go to jail, come back, and all they know, because they ain't learned nothing else, is to sell dope again. So it's really showing the cycle. You know what I'm saying? Did so we man. talked about we talked about making the money. Real game. We talked about looking good in the streets, and then we talked about high life. What a nigga got to think about at night after he done done all this dirty shit. Is there heaven for a G? We always made sure to talk about that type of shit, too. I swear. That show, it was a balance, but people tried to make it seem as if we glorified. Nah, no. it was niggas out here really getting that money. It was yes. niggas out here really living that life, driving those cars, Shout out getting bam. that work, you know what I'm saying, and doing that. But those same dudes at night, them dudes was conflicted spiritually about a lot of shit they did. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't cool as it is. No, no, no. You were, if it you was were a hustling, necessity it was, back then. It, we had to do this here. But if you had real money in the hood, you really gave back to your street, to your neighborhood. Oh, to, no question. Like, you had to. You, you were the mayor of that section. And it was always about going back, buying something, getting a little business, and posting up. Like, real having, having a station in the city. You know what I'm saying? Same way Bam did it, same way yes, Screw did it. You know, this was about the way the old man yeah. got the complex. This was about having a spot that you had in your Straight hood up, that, niggas could, that niggas could see in the hood. That, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that made your neighborhood what it was. Absolutely. But it also inspired the rappers. But I also inspired niggas too. You know what I'm saying? Because right. you see a nigga come from where you from, actually making money, trying to have a real business. Employing niggas, you know. I right, know a lot of young, right. I know a lot of young niggas that got their first little hood job at Bam. You got better they, believe you know it. What oh, I'm, we, I'm talking about you didn't make it too long, but you got. <laughs> hey, look, it was son. A, hey, look, hey, it, <laughs> that cars. was real. Look, I I know now, like watching people like Bam, you know what I'm saying, in the early days, watching people like Screw and what it took to really run a business and keep a business and trying to hire the right people and. And the service aspect of it, I, I picked Man. up so much game yeah. that I didn't even realize I was sitting on until it became my time to, to get my piece. Step up, up and my do shit, this and do that, and I'm gonna kill you because see, Bam was one of the first really organized detail shops on the South Side. You know what I mean? Shout out my brother for real, and he had already had a pizza chain before that. Mm. So it's a lot of things people don't know about Bam. You know, this ain't the first time he been in a wheelchair. Facts. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we got him. We He's bounced back from a few things. You know what I'm saying? And to still be here is amazing. You know what I mean? God is great for real, man. And thriving, too. Not what? surviving, thriving. Thriving, man. Thing. Still here. Go. Every time you think of South Park, you think of Bama. No. You know what I'm talking about? I'm just glad I was able to squeeze into a freestyle his name and make it bigger. <laughs> Me and Bama know was in the J A G. You know what I'm talking about? Like that was the days, man. See, and Pimp days. pushed you that way. Pat pushed me to the. I didn't want to write. Man, let's do this shit like we doing it at Screw Highs. But when he turned, man, because we had a time. It's crazy. I don't say you and Pimp fell out before he died, but y'all had some, you know, conflict of interest at the time. It wasn't fell out. Pimp was making choices that I didn't, I couldn't agree with. Pat did the same. That was the thing. thing. He bro. was, he was, he was moving a certain way. I didn't agree with it. I wasn't right. co-signing it. Um, but at the same time, you you're couldn't, a grown you man. You built four years of b making these relationships. So when he come home, it wasn't even about you. It was about when Pimp come home. Yeah. And again, even when we got into it with niggas, I, I never chose nobody over my brother. Right oh, or wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah, right or wrong. Never, we just got to. If that's never. what it's going to be and that's where we at, then that's what it's going to be. But my thing was it was lifestyle choices. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? It was lifestyle gotcha. choices I need that I didn't free. agree. That, yeah, yeah. That, that that I didn't agree with. I couldn't stand there and watch him do that, do certain things to himself. It's a so real I brother. fell back. I told him I love you, but I can't sit here and watch it. So if that's how you gonna do it, you got to go. You can't do it. I can't do it with you. And yeah. it's crazy having this talk with you right here because I was last. <clears throat> this was before Young Ro came home. Did Ro make? Yeah, Ro did make it home before Pimp died. Okay. Yes. We were at the airport because that's how you don't get thrown in that Bentley. That red one, when he already didn't wreck the other one. <laughs> we in that. No, I'll take that back. We was in the silver one. All I seen was a chandelier and a red nigga. I'm walking up to the thing. I'm running late. My my flight going to California. He dropping a, a, a pea, pea pot in his off at the airport. He mm -hmm. going to Oakland. Say, man. Hey, man. <laughs> yeah, man. All I seen was a chandelier sticky. A uh, chandelier for a hand. Good. He want to be going to let you know I'm here, what? baby. I'm he, get over here, man. This my little nail right This my big dog right here, man. See, yeah, you going to Cali, you need to hook up with him, Jack. <laughs> man made me get in the back seat, bud, and kept me there for an hour. Missed my flight. I'm so glad I missed it. Here it is. I'm, you know, dirt is here, 30, 40 in each pocket. I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I'm trying to, you know, tripping. spray off and tripping. This tripping area, you know what I mean? So, he just, man, he gave me an hour, and all he talked about was you, bro. You know what I'm saying? He was like, man, I love my brother, man. I just want to do this, and I want to do that. Oh, and to hear you saying that, yeah, man, I couldn't sit back and watch certain things that, like that go on. He already knew that. But he was like he had a reason for every look, he, in his mind. Look, he had been gone. Yeah, he's trying he, to catch he was up home. too many he ways. Wanted to, he wanted to get back into the flow. He wanted to, to be in that, in that, in that energy. At the right, time, you know what right. I'm saying, but that y'all had passed y'all. Yeah, but, but that, I felt like I felt like some of it was 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 unnecessary. I'm like, we really passed definitely that. unnecessary. We really passed that, but at the same time, with like, respect. That's, but if that's what the man want to experience, I gotta let Who him you? experience. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> that's you know he want to go out. He want to do him for a minute. I let I loved him. Do your thing. And just, but, but we was able to have a conversation. And get back on the right page. As me and Pat, Pat did too. You know what I'm saying? So me and Pat was able to do I'm that. I'm really, too. I'm really glad that I got my closure with that. That we, right, you know, right. we ended up on the same page about about what we needed to do. Cause it's not like we wasn't didn't like each other. Or oh, fuck never. You or that. It was never that. It was just I used like, to feel bad for you because it's like, God damn, pimp, come on, man. <laughs> Cause people, people, you doing the three two fat Pat and and the regular that pulls us. You know what it's, I mean? It's, it's but, too much. And and I guess people think because of the kind of person Pimp was that it had to be this loud and yelling and all of that. It was very calm. I, I ain't never yelled yeah. at Chad. Chad ain't never yelled at oh, me. Hell. I ain't never cussed at Chad. He ain't never hell cussed at no. me. It was never like that. Never. But I had to be honest about what I was seeing. That's true brotherhood. You know, you could have let him honest. bump his head and do this here and still supported him man, we, in any kind I, of way. Man, you I got put, a wife. You got, you know what had, I mean? We Come had on, big bro. bread on the table. Super big, big bread, bread on the table, yeah. and I felt like the bread was gonna make the behavior worse, Ooh. and that's why that's how I, why I stopped Ooh. it like I did. You know what I'm saying? Um, because yeah. and then once I stopped the bread, because there was solo show money for him and for me, but, but it was always understood. I know if he was cashed his hundred million dollar check you know they got saying? for us. The, the big it bread was always crazy. In the group. <laughs> but I let him do what he wanted to do because I loved him. I didn't want him to feel mm -hmm. like he had to do what I was telling him, big brother or not. 
Go do what you want to do. I already right. know you're going to come back oh, because it's sure. not what you think it is. It took me two years, yes. at least two years, to figure out how to even do a show without Pimp when he got locked up. Man. So I already knew it's not finna be what he think it is when he get out there. Cause you gonna want to do certain songs, and there might not be the songs that work with what you're doing. It's different, not right, you know man. what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. but but you man. you love people. You gotta like they always say, if you love them, let them go. Yeah, and and if they love back. you, they'll come, come back. back. And my brother came back. I swear he did, man. I swear he did. Hey, that's that's so trivial because it just makes me think about you know Pat, and it's just crazy how those stories parallel like that, man. Even with Screw. Man, do you know everybody like, why Screw didn't have a record label? Why he didn't? It? That's not what his purpose was. When people moving as a purpose, when it's a, God has a purpose on your life, it's just like pop. They moving with such urgency that we can't understand. I don't think Screw could have been able to really lead the charge musically if he'd have had to sit down and really deal oh, with the business no. side of he it. He wasn't going to do it. It would have really pulled him out of what he was trying Comfort to do. Comfort zone. You know what I'm saying? And the man really... All he wanted to do was just DJ and play music. This shit just happened to blow up and Thank literally you. take over Please the world. Tell him, man. And so Screw spent a lot of time trying to actually even realize who the fuck we he was stars. outside of I'll the South here. Side. You know, he knew who he was on the South Side, right? Yes. He understood yes. that. But you know, the shit blowing up, North Side niggas playing it. Louisiana niggas playing it. You know what I'm saying? Alabama niggas. New oh, York no, niggas bro. calling him. Telling them we got an award, we want to give you an award, and the only thing we know how to call an award is Gave the DJ Screw. Ring. They had to call it the DJ Screw Award because it was nothing else to call it. Right. So they had to give him an award that they had the name after. And it's something that you said in an interview a long time ago that made me always repeat this. Man, we created our own genre of music. It I don't really even is. know. I don't, I don't know if niggas understand what that means, man. That's why Screw's legacy is so important to maintain and uphold because I done been everywhere. And it's but specifically in New York, and this ain't no hating or nothing. We just I, know how I, I hard it was in New York. I tell, back it, then. I tell it all the time. Every time I would go to New York, try to play a record, say this, do something. Oh man, we've been doing that. Oh, you know, we smoking <laughs> switches, sweet. Oh, we've been smoking blood. We smoke oh, we doing that. We we smoking water. Oh, we've been smoking dust. A anytime you try to say about some hood shit or some new shit, we sip and serve. Oh, we've been did that. Yeah. They always did that. When I played that screw, mm. when I played that screw. Mm. Yo, son, I ain't never heard that like, what, what, like what this is. And the crazy thing was the first group I played them wasn't even all rap. Like it had Nixes. some R and B in there. Right. So it happened to have Nix, who was a New York R and B group. On that. And on that. And hear. they hearing it true. Oh! They tripping. Two trio. They tripping. This is who I was with Trill Lord moment. Jamal. It was me and Lord Jamal in the studio from uh, Brand Newbians. And I played it for him and and the homie Star, who was an R and B singer. And he was like, yo, what is this? I ain't never heard nothing like this. And for the first time ever, I was in New York with something that New York people couldn't say they did first. That's, hey. what, that's what Screw gave us. You know what I'm saying? Super shout out. Because people are always like, what you mean? Just want to be a DJ. Do you not understand that this man was Screw Rich? And to, for him to do what he want to do, like doing this trio burger. You're doing what you love to do. Yeah. And that's a whole nother job and a whole nother opportunity. You know what I'm saying? To just be doing something you love to do and make money with it. That's the thing. We were in Lil J's office, Troy set us up. Give you this here, man. Troy set us up. Like, no pun. You know what I'm saying? He go out there, hey, ride out here with me, man, to talk to Jay about <coughs> the Scarface record. This before, you know, I'm trying to put this album, this song on my album. So we go out there, boom, long story short. He come, he talked five minutes. We in the compound, you know, we all out there. They done made us take our cups back to the car. Mm -hmm. You know that's a no-no. Right. They made us take our burners back to the car. None that's a no-no. None of that. But because we going in with Troy, I guess we just got to, you know, fight our way out. You know what I mean? You hearing about rap a lot back then. So, you know, in Jay. You, you don't get to see you where you're going. You expect to see when Jay. Get, when you get to the gate, yeah, first of all, when you like, get to whoa. the gate to the compound, it's all blacked out. Yes. So you don't even know what's on the other side. Roll though. back. Car show. You don't even, and, 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 and look, I've, I've been going uh, to the compound. I haven't been in a couple of years, but I know I went to the compound for at least 20, 22 years in a row. You still woed. It was never not somebody at the door. Man. I done been there at 10 o'clock in the afternoon. I done been there at 4 in the morning having to meet the old man. It's always somebody there at the compound, at the gate. And waiting for whatever. Because, I mean, when you people got to understand, man, 
And then you know we big on cars. Oh my God. We pull up, it's like every car this man ever owned, he still got it. The antique shit. Still got it. The you know, album cover with the the original big body Benzes with the big Ferrari kits and big, all that. With the, the big Smitty logo kit. that niggas used to steal and put on yeah. a necklace and shit like yeah. that. I'm about there. There, the the uh infamous uh ghetto boy, the long one they used to be in all yeah. the time, the limousine. Hey man, the man got every car that he ever had, man. That's too real there, man. So we go up there, you know, they have some dazzlers downstairs. We go up, we in there. Jay say, you first I'm waiting Jay to be some 12 foot tall dude, like for real. Like the way he, you hear about him, he little than Jay life, is right? just called little Jay. Cause he got a daddy that's big Jay or something. You think it's ironic? Yeah. Okay, all right, but he's that deal, that real deal. And it's like, man, he say straight up, this long story short, he like, uh, we found out KK was uh, uh, Lil C nephew. Mm -hmm. Lil C was working rap a lot West back then. So he like, let's make it work. Jay said, so what do we got to do? Like, screw, talk to me. I'm trying to put, what do we do? Screw so real, he break out. I'm sitting at the desk closest to Jay because at this time, my money on the line. My money is what got me in Pat in the studio. So I'm trying to pay attention. This is class for me. Right. He say, man, you see that right there sitting next to you? You need to talk to him about Southside players and Fat Pat. And Fat Pat here. See this red motherfucker right here? Cornbread, KK? You need to talk to him about DEA. I just DJ. You know what I'm saying? Passed us the ball right there, bro, before we even knew what we was doing. We spent too many years trying to get screwed to real. You the CEO, we going to do the work. Never wanted it, bro. No, no, not at all. You, you got to understand. I, I'm from the era of screw where if you at the screw house by one, two o'clock, you might have to take screw somewhere. I remember y'all pulled up the first time. Took him to Fiesta, yeah. paid, paid the light bill, got him some knee high soda. You got to take him. You know what I'm saying? Took him to Sam. My first time ever go going, the, the first time ever going <laughs> to Sam's in my life was with screw. On God, first time I <laughs> ever went to Sam's in my life, right That's there on 16. That's how you know if you had a relationship with Screw. If you took him to get them cassettes, this. I'm talking about crazy, man. That's wild. And that was an unimitation. It was an honor to drive Screw around. Like, it was. It was like, I ain't, and I was, I was that nigga. Like, this was oh, great. Yeah. No, I was no, that no, nigga no, at no. this time. No, no, super. And really, like, pull up on, hey, hey B, man, can you run me? Hell yeah, nigga, I got screw in my car. I feel like Man. I got the motherfucking president in right. my car. I got, and protected at all costs. This before camera phones, you know what I'm saying? So you just having this moment with yourself. But here's the crazy thing, right? Niggas ain't even know who Screw was. I swear. Niggas wouldn't know who Screw. You wouldn't have known who no. Screw was no. if you saw him. They didn't know really till he started doing shows at the clubs and everything like that. I that's another get... person that would not that did not look like what you thought he yeah, looked like. That's for real. Oh, very yeah, scroll, very yeah, low key, yeah, unassuming yeah, dude. Yeah, super low key. No Jerry, none yeah, of that none shit tell. Way, way. The, when super I saw later. when I saw he had a car, it blew my mind. Everybody mind. It blew my nah, the and, car and, he and got painted made, it the, and put rims on it. Oh, the, you were talking about the cutlass, the little burgundy No, no, in no. I'm talking about the Impala. Oh, yeah, the Impala just flipped everybody mind. I just couldn't believe that Screw was spending money. Yeah, that that's what that was the thing. Not that he had went and bought a car. That screw was actually spending money. Bun, you know what I'm saying? Bun. I'm gonna tell you my favorite screw story of all time. Please, New Year's Day. We was all together. We was all kicking it. As the night pack got killed, I'm coming through the because niggas call niggas got to call niggas up late. You know what I'm saying? Early morning with this shit. Um. I'm leaving, I'm grinding through the south side. I pass by BAMs, I see screw car. Is it I painted say, yet? Yes. Okay. okay. I say, why is, what is screw doing at BAM? BAM ain't even open. I pull up, screw knocked out. He's waiting on me to pull up. Knocked out in, in the driveway. I said, now, first of all, it's the safest car on the south side. Nobody's gonna touch this car. What's, they gonna maybe wake up twenty cars protected. He it. parked at the safest place he could be, on the south side. So as crazy and random as it would have seemed, it wasn't. It, was it made on me. all the sense in the world. I ain't wake him up. I see him. He's knocked. I saw he. He good. He was waiting on he me. Good. He had bams. He had bams in his car. Bro. He good. He knew how to get in the building if he needed to. Cause you gotta remember, Bam was locked up at this time. That's he, right. He was waiting on me, bro. Cause you gotta come open Saturday morning. Yeah. Wow. 
That morning was the most fucked up ever. Bro. That was that was a. I'm telling you, I didn't even get to go to sleep. I was still up turning up when the call came. This shit was I was like, this up, shit is wild, man. This shit was crazy. This shit was fucked up, man. And then the killer thing is, that's why when I tell you, like, it parallels so much our stories, man. Because when I got to Pimp Call, it was the same thing, bro. Like, and then the Hulk call. See, the Pokey call. We lost so much, but gained so much. That's why our culture is so rich. I remember the Gator call. That shit broke my heart. Oh my god, that's that's that. That was that was one. That's the so worst way. That's the worst kind of call to get. The Gator call. That's the worst type of call to get because you wonder, damn, did I, did I not answer the phone and maybe say something to you know what I mean? That could have changed something. Because mm -hmm. at first they were trying to say that's what Pim did. You know what yeah, I'm saying? No, no. The streets. I'm like, y'all don't know this nigga's fucking pride too big. And nah. fuck, what the hell? No, no way. Love, not love happening. This kid, love this kids too much. Remember, damn, with AIDS, like any of that shit, because you know Al and a few other people that it it be more medical, underlying medical situations we don't know about. No, that 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 the individuals we talking about don't really fully understand. Sometimes still trying to navigate. You and know? it's more important to just that would not they pride to have to not be who they are. See. I I I I have to be honest about looking at Kanye sometimes and being like this nigga wild, this nigga's tripping, this nigga need to take his medicine. And you but, really know this nigga but, saying that. But I know why certain people don't like taking certain medication. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I understand it because of Side how effects. far away from themselves. Like, if certain people take certain medications, they can't really be who they need to be sometimes in their mind creatively. It doesn't allow them to, to to fully lock into that creative space. Cause some of this medication is meant to really numb a nigga. You know what I'm saying? So he don't feel no kind of way. And his side effect, take him out of their it Take him out of their song. So and now- We, we so, both have a friend that you making me understand yeah, something right so, now. So now they sitting in the studio with all this equipment and there's no inspiration coming through. Cause they done numb the senses. They done numb the creativity. So yeah. niggas like man, I can't take this medicine. I can't, I can't. I can't make my music. And I just you know uh, what I'm saying? But then when they don't make the they don't take the medicine, the music is good, but sometimes they end up saying crazy shit on the music or exhibiting crazy behavior while they're in the studios. It's just I, you know, the more I, I I try to that's why I be careful about what I say about shit and what I say about to. people. Cause you gotta really consider what motherfuckers might go through, you know, might be going through. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. Now, that don't now, that yeah. don't absolve a lot of this white folks matter. None mm -hmm. of that shit. You know, some of that shit you just tripping. Right. But I do understand why people with certain mental health conditions don't take don't want to take their medication regularly. That's dope. Yeah, you know because it's, especially if you're an entertainer. I don't recommend it no, at all. Not but I, I understand. I understand, I understand yeah. especially create people whose livelihoods depend on their creativity. Oh, that's dope. And other people depend on their creativity. Man. There's a lot of people that depend on something. So you like begging that. me to take something that may be vital to your Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> livelihood. But because, but because, you know what I'm but saying? be counterproductive to what I'm trying to do. Exactly, man. Look, man, this girl just hit me on the I already I know. Go. We got to go. I know you're I'm coming back. Bun. I know you're coming, coming back. back. We ain't even really I'm get going, deep. We, I'm we going there also. We ain't even really we scratched get the deep. surface. We barely in the 2000s at this point. Yeah, at so this we got point. to come back yeah. and, and talk about hey, some Hey, man. Shit. And I think this would be some healing shit for both of us, too. No, it, it is, man. It you is. Know what I'm you know, we, we share a lot of, we have a lot of shared experiences, but with that comes shared trauma. Already. You know what I'm saying? Already, so this man. is actually, man, I, have, I really enjoyed this conversation oh, because, man, you, know. you know, we got shit that really only we can. Talk about there you go. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm glad I pulled up, man, on this dirty third podcast. And all I'm doing is just trying to document the history our way. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So they don't tell it different later. I tell people all the tell time. Tell Queenie I love it. I didn't even get to the point. Like, <laughs> I was like, how you like that was coming next? Like, tell me about Queenie. Look, we gotta get to Queenie. We gotta I'm gonna come, I gotta come back to talk burgers, so I'm gonna bring some burgers when I come back. There you go. You know there what you I'm go. saying? And you already see I'm representing, man, as you should too. You know what I'm saying? You know what it is. We'll be back, man. Appreciate you, bud. Big dog. Come on, baby. The realest, realest in the building. PA, baby. You know what I'm talking about? All the way to the H, baby. We out of here. Southside. Yeah. Ooh. Outside. Southside. Southside. Outside. Oh, we outside. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hey, let me tap you in right quick, man. It's 2024. I know y'all, you know what I'm talking about? 
finna this up, uh, Dirty Theory Podcast, man. I know y'all feeling that bum, man, because it's 2024, man. And bum's still true. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Trill Burger, man. You know what I'm saying, man? It's going down, man. One on one with Mike D, man. Y'all see what's going on, man. It's for the culture, man. Y'all getting that true, screwed up history, man. That ace time history, man. You know what I'm saying? And we finna take our show on the road. Just best believe that. You know what I'm saying? But y'all better stay tuned, cause see, tomorrow is the world premiere of God Files, man. You know what I'm saying? Be y'all ski takes, man. I got Dot, Smack One, one more special guest. I ain't gonna really put y'all up on them. But just, just stay tuned, man. Cause it's going down in 2024, man. One on one with Mike D, Got It Files, Hustle Homies. Dirty third podcast, man. You know how I plan, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Fire, man. What's up? You hang by. Y'all ain't heard. Y'all ain't heard. It's the dirty third. Dirty third. You know what I'm talking about? Oh.